Let's look next at the dynamic queue, so it's implemented as a linked list, and the template version. We'll try and kill two birds with one stone here. See how that goes. Open the wrong thing. Let me get that back over there. There we go. Okay. So here we have in 1810, uh, we're going to use the dynamic queue.h. If you're looking through this in the list of files and class shares, you have to read very carefully to get the right one. Anyway, and we're going to do a string for it. So that should be fun. And again, our queue size is 5. So even if it's dynamic, we're still going to keep track of it. And we'll have a string called name. We're going to instantiate a dynamic queue type object of strings called queue. And then we'll enqueue some names into it. Since we're using a string, we'll use the get line. <laughs> Do you remember? Of course, if you were mixing your variable types, you'd have to use a C and dot ignore along with it. And then once we get a name and save it in our temporary variable name, then to the queue object, we will do the NQ method and send it name. And then we'll display them back. So to display them back, we'll DQ one at a time and display it back. All right. Here we have a template class called dynamic queue. Again, look carefully. Our structure has a value in it, which in this case is just a string. It could have been a structure itself, or uh, in one of the other sample exercises, it was an actual class that we sent. Lots of things could be sent. And then we have a pointer to next. Those are in the privates here for the node. Of course, you have to have one. Then, since it's a queue, we also need a pointer to the front and a pointer to the rear and the number of items. Constructor, destructor, nq, dq is empty, is full and clear. And this time what we'll do <coughs> with the dynamic queue then is set the front to null and the rear to null. Instead of minus 1, they were minus 1 before. This time we'll set them to null, which is nothing. It's not the same as 0. It's nothing. And the the destructor calls the clear function, uh, which will be down here. And the clear function, uh, remember we saw this before. I mentioned it already on some video. So when you have this clear function, we need to have the dummy variable. This is similar to what we did in Chapter 14 with the postfix increment. If you recall way back there, we had to have a dummy variable. So we have to have one here. And then while the queue is not empty, then DQ one of the items. We'll see what the DQ function looks like in just a second. But let's go back up and do the NQ first. I think that's the next one in order. OK, so let's NQ. We'll make a pointer. And then we'll have to set up our new node and store the value. Uh, it says num. Remember, this time num is a string, but we'll always use num. So it, uh, create a new Q node object, just one object here, and put the and set it, set the new node pointer to point to it, and then into the value member of new node put the item, which in this case will be a string, and set the address of the, which is the value of the next pointer to null, because there isn't another one. Now we'll have to do the adjustment adjustment of the front and the rear. So if the queue is empty, then front into front put new node and into rear put new node. Or else, if it's not empty, if there's some in it, then take the next, the, the new node pointer and put that address into the, this is driving me crazy, I better stop moving my mouse. Uh, take the address of new node and put it into the next value of the rear element. And then set new node to rear. So we make the old rear point to the new rear is what we're doing. 
make the old rear point to the new rear, and then increment the number of items. When it comes to dequeuing, and then you remember what's going to happen is you might have to write a function, so you copy whichever sets of these code is the closest, whichever function is the closest to what you want to do, and then modify it, add code. So dequeue, we'll make a pointer, and if the key was empty, we'll say the key was empty. Otherwise, if there's something in it, then we'll have to take the value that's in that front and store it somewhere in a temporary. So we'll put it in item. All right. Then, uh, then we have to remember what that address is so we can use it. So take the current front and put it in temp. And take the address of the next item and put it in front and then delete temp. It's that three-way switch. And then decrement the number of items. It's very similar to what we did before, but this is the linked list implementation rather than the array implementation. So we don't have quite the same number of counting issues as we did before. You know, in the in the static queue, you have to keep moving the front and the rear and by a calculation. And here, you don't have to do it by a calculation. That's what I mean to say.